there! My name's Mayuko and welcome to Crash Course, the show where two brave developers explain software engineering concepts, trends, and ideas using only what's in this room. No pens, paper, whiteboard, or screens of any kind are allowed. Our developers are Mosh and Brandy, and they'll be explaining, and this is gonna be a good one, serverless architecture. They'll compare it to a traditional architecture and how it can save you a little bit more time. All right, are you two ready? We are. Hope so. Awesome, let's go. So serverless can be a little misleading because there are still servers involved. That's absolutely right. The first time I heard about it, I said, how is it possible that we build an application that doesn't have a server or backend? So let's take a look at what, you know, a traditional architecture might look like, and then we can break it up and see the differences. Yep. Sounds great. I'm gonna grab some switches here. So this is the traditional architecture where we build applications as a monolith. So it's one gigantic piece that we build and deploy, and there's probably a database somewhere that is supporting that. Mm -hmm. But serverless is different. We build a bunch of small, loosely coupled functions, and we deploy and scale them independently. So if this functionality requires more load, the platform will automatically scale that up or down. Mm -hmm. We don't have to manage that. It's just a different way, a newer way to build applications. Mm -hmm. And what is more interesting is that we can have different databases under each of these functionalities. Mm -hmm. And we are not even tied to the same provider. For example, we can use one provider for one service mm -hmm. and another provider for another service. Mm -hmm. So in a real world application, how should we define these? For example, imagine you're building an application for renting movies. Mm -hmm. So in this domain, we deal with concepts such as movies, customers, and rentals. So each of this would be a function or service of your application. Mm -hmm. So you build a service for managing the movies. Ooh, movies, <laughs> movies, <laughs> nice. Yeah, another service for managing, managing the, the customers. customers. Or a service for doing all the calculations for rentals and returns. And mm -hmm. we can build and deploy and scale them independent of each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of serverless architecture. Whereas before in a traditional architecture, when all of these were in that kind of string, there was one team or one company that was managing all of those servers yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah, one of the big benefits of doing it this way is at the same time, because uh. you are not managing those servers. Mm, I see. On the serverless side, you're relying on the third parties to handle the servers for you and all the updates and management and maintenance. And that also means uh, reduced cost because with this model, we only pay for the time our application code is executed. So we have a movie rental business here, which has a lot of services that live on different providers, but what's on this side of the table of how someone would use that? Yeah, I'm really curious, how does the actual interaction work? Yeah, so the hand, hand. which hand, yeah? The hand as a user. <laughs> yeah. This is a human. <laughs> The user or the client talks to an API gateway, mm -hmm. and this gateway knows about our services. It, it acts like a router. It knows where to send that request to. They define the, the functions mm -hmm. um, that are needed, and those are the ones that they use to send requests. Gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The serverless framework basically abstracts out uh, the underlying provider. Mm. So that makes it easier to switch providers if you need to. So it seems like a lot of existing companies, a lot of startups use a very traditional architecture for servers. So if they want to use something like serverless, how would they do that? There is a hybrid approach where you build a lot of your applications with the traditional architecture, mm -hmm. but certain functionalities, you implement them and deploy them using the serverless architecture. Yeah, that's actually something that we're kind of dealing with right now mm. um, is we want to go more of a serverless route. So it's like oh. we have another bunch of switches. So this is like another piece of the application that is built with the traditional architecture mm. and it's plugged into the whole serverless architecture. I see. So just to kind of sum it up, what are the benefits of serverless architecture? One of the biggest benefits is as a UI developer, even a front-end developer, is you can focus on building the actual application itself mm -hmm. instead of worrying about the back-end infrastructure. And it sounds like both for UI and back-end as well, because they don't have to do this either. 100%. Very cool. And, and you're also reducing your costs. You mm -hmm. only pay for what you use, mm -hmm. increase productivity, mm -hmm. and you can get to the market faster. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for walking us through that. And so thank you, Brandy and Mosh, for being on the show today. Thank you so much for watching and being on this journey with us. We'll see you next time on Crash Course. So there you go. Boom. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> <For> mic drop. <laughs>